Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat, mga kaibigan. Mahalagang pag-uusapan natin ngayong umagang ito. Tukul sa mga nagaganap sa iba't ibang bahagi ng bansa, lalo tigit na mayroong COVID-19 pandemic. Alam po ninyo, mga kaibigan, uh, hindi biro ang naging dagok nitong uh, pandemic na ito. Sapagkat apektado ang ating mga kawani sa pamahalaan, ang mga manggagawa, mga magsasaka, ganun din ang mga manging isla. At isa na rin sa mga problematong problemado ay ang industriya ng turismo. Problemado rin ang paglalakbay patungo sa iba't ibang bahagi ng bansa sapagkat wala namang magdadala sa mga turista. May isang kumpanya ng eroplanong nag-alok na ng early retirement sa may dalawang daang empleyado at tumanggap na sila ng kaukulang benepisyo Subalit ang the other side of it ay wala na silang trabaho. Ayon po sa informasyon, uh, may mga tanyag na ring restaurant na nagsasara dahil sa pagkalugi. At uh, ngayong umaga, kasama natin ang mga gobernador ng Albay, ng Katanduanes, at hopefully makakasama rin ang gobernador ng Bohol. Kasama rin natin ang isang manggagamot at isang nakababatid sa industriya ng air transport. Kaya't magsisimula tayo sa ating talakayan, pakikilala natin ang ating mga panauhin. Kasama po natin si Albay Governor Al Francis Bichara. Kasama rin po natin si Governor Joseph Kua mula po naman sa Katanduanes. At inaasahan natin makakasama si Governor Arthur Yap. Kasama rin natin si Dr. Ted Erbosa. Asa na yung ating kaibigan si Dr. Ted Erbosa na siya po namang uh, special advisor doon po naman sa chief implementer ng COVID-19 program. At nga rin, sa linya rin natin ang isang albayano, ang kaibigan nating si Robert Cole Lim na siya po namang executive director ng Air Carriers Association of the Philippines. Sisimula natin for brief statements from our guests. Kumusta ang kanilang mga nasasakupan? Simulan natin kay Governor Al Francis Bichara. Uh, Governor, magandang umaga po sa inyo. All right, let's uh, unmute the good governor. Teka, sandali po. Yes, Governor. Teka, medyo mahina po yung volume. Pakitrial nga po ulit. Let's give it a try. Mm-hmm. Teka po. Sandali po, uh, Governor. I could hardly hear you. Yes, Governor. Mm. Uh, it's the same. Yan. Baka po sakali. Let's try. Uy, walang signal, Governor. Sandali po, Governor Al. Governor Al, I could not hear you. Sandali po. Magtungo po muna tayo sandali sa Katanduanes. Governor Joseph Kua, good morning. Governor? Yes, Governor. Good morning, Melo. Sa Dirac, sa Katanduanes. Good morning. Yeah, what's the latest sa Katanduanes? Is it still COVID-19? Uh, may may uh, dalawang cases kaming bago, uh, Melo. Uh, COVID positive. Uh, uh, OFW ito, no? Uh, dumating. Uh, nagkaroon ng... Uh, may, may, may counting problema lang kasi na nagkaroon sila ng quarantine certificate kaya nakapasok ng Katanduanes. But... Uh, walang ano walang bitbit na result ng swab test then the following day uh, hum, uh, tumawag yung uh, quarantine uh, uh, Bureau of Quarantine sa Manila na positive po na uh, isang pasyente ay eh, isang uh, OFW na nakapasok sa amin and then uh, yun na uh, uh, nagkaroon ulit kami ng isang uh, uh, positive COVID pero sa bago din Hello? Yes, yes, I could hear, I could hear. So, yun ang sitwasyon. Tagalan yung results, kaya sa mga sa inyo. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
Subukan natin si Gomer ng Al Francis Bichara from the situation. Uh, good morning. Melo, okay na ba? Melo. Good morning. Yeah. Yes, it's good. Teka, sandali po. We just make some adjustments. We just make some adjustments. Mm-hmm. Yes, Governor. Uh, good morning, Melo. Yeah, what's the latest in Albay? Well, the latest here, we have seven positives at the moment. And um, we have 40 buses to pick up yung mga stranded and uh, yung mga, yung mga Albayanos na nasa Metro Manila. 40 buses to pick up more than 1,000 stranded uh, Albayanos. Mm -hmm. And uh, I heard, do you have quarantine facilities for them as well? Yeah, we have in every municipality, in every LDU meron. So, pagdating nila, pero ipupunin namin ngayon sa Maynila. Kasi, yung iba, wala nang trabaho, wala nang uh, pera. Kawawa naman, nasa kali, yung iba. So, pupunin namin sa Baclaran, most of it, most of them. Yung iba naman sa Quezon City, dahil may coordination kami ni Mayor Jordan Monte. Ah, okay. All right. Uh, siguro, si Dr. Ted Elbosa can tell us, Bakit na babalam yung results doon sa mga nakukunan ng uh, specimens? Dr. Ted, good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Melo. Good morning sa ating mga governor na kasama natin ngayon. Uh, ang mga test center kasi natin, nung mga ginawa sila, medyo bago, di ba? Na dahil nung January, parang tatlo lang yung test center natin. Ngayon, nasa 50 plus na tayo, 58 na yata. Eh, ang problema sa mga bagong test center or molecular lab, hindi fully automated. So, iilan lang yung nag-fully automate, RITM, Red Cross. So, ang nangyayari kung minsan, eh, man na mano, kung libo yung tinetest, matagal siya i-manually ipadala yung result. So, yung, yung test kasi itself, 24 to 48 hours eh. Basta na ipasok mo na doon sa makina. Ang problema, yung backlog, tinatawag, napakadaming tinetest doon sa isang lugar. At yung pangalawa, yung pagproseso ng resulta. At pagbigay uli doon sa, pare, kagaya nito pinag-uusapan natin, OFW. So ang dami yan eh, 2,000 na day yan. Ang napada, napauwi sa mga probinsya ay lampas 40,000. 40,000 po. Kaya inabot yung iba na isang buwan. Mas matagal pa yung paghintay ng test kesa doon sa tinatawag nating 14-day quarantine. So okay. yun ang naging problema dyan. Yung bang problema ngayon ay malulutas para wag naman manganib yung ating mga kababayan na sa lalawigan at yung mga pauwi. Oh, maganda yung tinanong mo kasi ang ngayon ang naging plano na, binago na nila, the moment lumapag sila sa airport, upuna na sila ng swab at pag lumabas na yung test within let's say 3 to 5 days kasi yung parang ano natin ngayon eh, average result day. Pagdating ng 5 days at ito ay negative, pauuwiin na sila sa probinsya nila. So ang magiging bahala na sa kanila ay si Governor. Si Governor na ang mag magtutuloy ng 14-day quarantine nila doon. Kasi ang nangyari dito sa mga nakaraan, nakaisang buwan na dito, 21, 28 days. Pagkatapos pagdating nila sa probinsya, eh, siyempre natatakot yung ating mga local chief executive na mahaluan sila at nangyari yan. Sa late ngayon, meron kaming mga kaso, maraming kaso na galing sa OFW at uh, locally stranded individuals. At uh, yun ang nagkalat. So, hindi ko naman masisi yung mga local chief executive na sasabihin eh, pagdating mo, galing mo Maynila, kahit na-test ka na, eh, kailan ka ba na-test? Ay, naku, two weeks ago. Eh, de, mag-quarantine mo na uli. So, ngayon, ang proseso binilisan nila, uh, pag nakuha ang resulta at negative, pauuwiin na sa probinsya at doon na sa probinsya mag-quarantine. So, total, ikaw-quarantine naman talaga ng mga local chief executive yan. Oh, okay. Uh, sa sitwasyon naman ng paglalakbay, uh, Robert, Yes. Uh, latest from your end, may mga flights na domestic, no? Uh, meron na rin international flights. Uh, would you say that the air industry is slowly recovering? Uh, from the time, uh, well, first of all, good morning, uh, Melo. Good morning to the governors no? and to Dr. Herbosa. Uh, thank you for this opportunity uh, in getting us involved. So domestic flights, uh, we started June 1, medyo... 
a lot of uh, I call this start and stops because of the coordination. Pero this week mukhang nag-i-improve na, no? At nakakatulong din yung coordination ng all parties concerned kasi pag sinabi natin transportation uh, on normal uh, situations, more so when you talk of transportation in an extraordinary situation like we find ourselves in, madami talagang coordination and interdependencies, no? Uh, we also have to include the LGUs as part of the inter interdependencies because we are moving people from one place to the other. Mm -hmm. uh, slowly, uh, there are now more provinces who are opening their airports to passengers. Last week kasi, kukunti lang, ano? At magkakaroon pa ng tentative decisions that are, uh, that are reversed. And this is based on the local communities assessing naman the public health situation in their local communities. The yeah. more important thing for, for us the airlines is uh, predictability para makapagplano kami. At yung sinasabi ni Dr. Herbosa na ang bagong proseso siguro is it might be better for the tested OFWs na imbes na i-quarantine dito sa Manila, i-diretso na sa probinsya. Uh, I think from a process point of view, uh, that would be welcome. No? Dahil ang nangyayari ngayon, there is a limit of 600 international passenger arrivals per day. This is imposed by the IATF. And the reason for this quota is because to give DOH uh, the, the breathing space to process the arriving OFWs. No? So it has nothing to do with the capacity of the airlines to bring the OFWs from Manila to the provinces. Now, kung ang overall goal natin is to bring them quicker from Manila to the provinces so, and where they can be quarantined and where they can also reunite with their families. Uh, <coughs> framework yan and we would support it. And that means, uh, matatanggal yung kota, madidiklag ang Manila, you can have Clark, you can have Cebu, and other international airports, no? Pag uh, Davao. Pwede na din pag lumuwag ang Bacolod, Iloilo, mm -hmm. uh, Cagayan de Oro. It means that the Philippine carriers can process the transport of OFWs. At alam natin dadami pa ang arrival ng OFWs in the Philippines. Yes. So certainly we, we should come up with a more streamlined but safe subject to all the health protocols that IATF and DOH would require. But make it also convenient for the OFWs kasi mahirap din yung naka-quarantine ka eh. Yeah. Pero let me ask you, pag sumakay ba sa aeroplano, ligtas ba yung mga kasama niyang pasahero? May social distancing or physical distancing na ba? Ang nangyayari ngayon is, well, we adapt this uh, safety on the ground is safety in the air. Okay. Um, so-called slogan ng aviation industry. So that from the time that you get out of your transportation on the ground, you are already subjected to thermal okay. scanning, all, all sorts of hygienic and sanitation procedures para ma-screen na, no? Sino yung may sakit? Uh, at they can be segregated because based on statistics that we have uh, we have been informed, uh, you can screen 80% of affected individuals by screening them. Mm -hmm. So you're removing the risk to, to, to passengers that will eventually reach the aircraft cabin. But abut man inside the aircraft, uh, you have the health protocol. And procedures, no? So, uh, ang last three rows, naka-reserve yan, just in case for magkaroon ng sakit on board during the flight, pwede mo siyang i-isolate. But the movement of people inside the aircraft is uh, limited. Uh, ang service ng food is very simple and in pre-package, uh, what do you call this, packaging. And of course, we have the technology inside the aircraft, which is the HEPA filters. No? 
uh, this technology is very important because it mimics the hygienic condition of an operating room in a hospital. Okay. Uh, it, it, the technology involves the infusion of fresh air every few minutes, uh, which is being sucked out from top to bottom. So, and the thing ng air sa aeroplano is from the top, and then it is being sucked in the floor. So, yun ang movement niya. It's not sideways. And then it is being filtered. And the filter, yung tinatawag nilang high efficiency particulate filters, uh, tanggal dyan ang, uh, no, ang mga COVID viruses na sasa, nasa, nahaharan niya at nafi-filter niya. Okay. So overall, it is a, uh, a we are creating a safer environment. No? Definitely, we can say that technology in the air is there to provide a safer. Hindi naman, hindi naman 100%. No? The only 100% that we can really rely on is the vaccine. But certainly, all of these biosecurity measures plus technology should make air transport rel relatively safer. Mm, okay. Thank you for the assurance. Si Governor Bichara saka si Governor Kuwa may have something to say about air transport. Sa Katanduanes, being an island province, uh, gaano kahalaga yung aeroplano sa inyo at meron na ba regular na flights ngayon? Please, Governor. Well, well, yes. Uh -huh. Wala pa kaming uh, flight sa ngayon but uh, may, may announcement na ang ano, civil aviation that on July 1, may umpisa na ang flight namin sa Virag. Will this be on a daily basis? Uh, recently, we have only four times a uh, week, you know, MWF and Sunday sa Cebu Pacific. Yun lang ang flight namin dito, ma'am. Yeah. But uh, uh, getting to be a tourist uh, hot spot. Meron ba kayong programa for tourists? Well, actually, uh, we have a good uh, tourist destination in Katanduanes. But our, really, our problem really is the frequency of our flights. You know? We don't have daily flights. Kaya yun ang nag, uh, na, na, yun ang nakaka-bottleneck ng uh, tourism namin sa Katanduanes. Ah, okay. Uh, so, yeah. uh, Hello? Hello, Mel? Yes, uh... Amin ba yung tanong? Amin ba yung tanong? Okay, Al. Governor Al, subukan natin. Yeah, what was the question again, man? Yung uh, frequency ng flights sa Pilipasi? Uh, three times a week, three times a week. Three times a week. Cebu Park, saka yung uh, Palo. Pero yung, uh, yung uh, flight sa Cebu, nasa pa namin, nasa pa namin sa Cancel Moon. Uh, nasa high rate ng Cebu. Kaya lang isip ka. Can you hear me? Yeah. Pero, uh, yung bang tourism industry, uh, gaano at hindi ang naging epekto nitong uh, COVID-19 sa atin sa Antarctica? Ang bagay. Kasi, yun ang pangyayang resort. No. Yes. So, governor we'll have to do we'll have to do some adjustments let's give it a try all right uh, nagkaroon ng interference sa signal one more time para kay uh, governor bichara uh, he was saying something about the tourism industry and uh, covid 19s impact let's give it a try governor uh, what do you foresee in the coming days uh, for tourism in the province? Well, actually, uh, the situation is not really very uh, bright. No? Matatagalan ito. The mere fact na kahit na magbukas, eh, yung mga tao, kasi may, may apprehension pa rin. Eh. So, um, we don't expect so much in the near uh, future. Hindi basta pag in-open yan, lahat magsisipalikan sa normal. Mm -hmm. But we're doing this slowly, gradually. 
sarado lahat eh, pati yung sarado yung mga hotels. Uh, yung mga restaurants, limited. Distance. Then yung mga resorts, sarado. So, I know, we'd have to wait eh. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, Dr. Hermosa, gano'ng katagal bago mawala yung pangamba ng tao tungkol sa COVID-19? Naku, sana hindi mawala. <laughs> Kasi pag nawala, ibig sabihin nun, hindi na tayo mag-behave uh, ng mga social distancing, hand washing, face mask wearing. Uh, inaalis na natin itong mga restrictions na nakasama sa ating ekonomiya. Kasi ito, hindi naman ito ginawa para masug po yung virus. Eh. We do not we do not remove the epidemic or the pandemic by doing this uh, government restrictions. Ginawa lang natin to to slow down transmission and for the health system to catch up. So, kulang tayo ng test center. So, nagumpisa tayong tatlo. Ngayon, 50 plus na. Kulang pa rin yun. Sa tingin ko, dapat mga over 100 ang test center natin. Pag inaral mo ang ginawa ng Vietnam, hindi sila nag-restriction. Pero from July, from January to March or April, nakatayo sila from three, kagaya natin, nakatayo sila ng 110 na test center. Tapos ang tinayo nila, hindi temporary quarantine facility. Ang ginawa nila, in-expand nila yung mga existing hospital nila. So ginamit nila yung pera nila para palakasin at uh, gawin ng opportunity ng COVID to, to strengthen their health system. Eh, tayo, Wala tayong naidagdag na ospital actually. Diba? Nirepurpose lang natin ang mga stadium. Ang feeling ko sana by this time nagtatayo na tayo ng mas malalaking public hospital for this and the next pandemic or for this second wave kung magsa-second wave tayo. So yun yung mga yun yung mga kritik ko sa mga nangyari na bagalan ako. Sana hindi tayo nag uh, naggawa nitong mga economic sacrifices kasi madami pong tinamaan. Sa, sa medicine, ang tawag namin dyan, the cure was worse than the illness. Yun ang, <laughs> yun ang nangyari. Ang daming nawala ng trabaho, bumagsak ang airline industry, bumagsak ang tourism. Uh, although maraming new businesses na, puma, na nabubuhay, Yang, kagaya itong mga video teleconferencing natin, mayaman na siguro itong stocks nito. Kasi nga, lahat ng buong mundo ay gumagamit nito mga Pero let me ask you, uh, Dr. Ted, yes. are, are we looking at the correct data? Because uh, it's been uh, controversial the past weeks, no? Are we looking at the data, correct data at the moment? We are looking at the correct data. Yan po ang data ang totoo. Pero siya ba ay real time? Yun ang problema. Kasi when you make decisions, hindi mo gustong decision ay yung uh, one week old data or one month old data. Diba? Ang gusto mo yung real time. Pag nag-grounds ako sa pasyente ko, hindi, wala akong pakialam sa vital signs niya last week. Ang gusto ko yung vital signs niya kagabi. Diba? Para malaman ko kung i-increase ko ba yung dose ng gamot or tatanggalin ko na kung magaling na siya. So yun ang, yun ang mga shortcoming natin. Uh, Ini-improve naman yan. Ang nakikita ko as uh, our data management systems are improving at uh, ang knowledge. Kasi alam mo, walang playbook dito sa pandemic na to eh. Lahat bago, lahat na pa, from Italy, Europe, to America, to China, lahat sila na pa in terms of uh, what to do. Yun lang nga, may iba successful sa kanilang methodology, may iba hindi gaanong successful. Kung i-judge ko yung Philippine response, uh, medyo yun nga, late, mabagal. Number two, uh, malaki yung effect sa economy. Pero pag tinanong mo ako, Tama ba yun? Palagay ko, tama yun kasi ang health system natin, weak. Oh, ang ibig sabihin ko nun, yung infrastructure natin, talagang it could have collapsed kung tayo ay kagaya ng nangyari sa Italy or New York. New York and Italy had very strong health systems. Madami okay. silang ICU, madami ventilator. E tayo eh, nung before COVID, puno na ang mga public hospital. So imagine na lang kung nagi tayong parang Italy or Lombardy or New York. But uh, really Dr. Had more Dr. Erbosa, you were once under Secretary of Health. Uh, would Correct. you say that uh, hindi nag-improve ang health system natin from your time? Oh, wala. Eh, yung mga pinaplano namin hospital, ilan lang yung natapos. We built, we tried to build uh, several to increase the capacity. I, I defined that before as the 
infrastructure gap of the health system. Kahit okay. magpasa ka kasi ng batas, kagaya ng universal health care law, dagdagan mo yung pera sa health care, kung wala ka naman ng infrastructure, eh magta-traffic pa rin. Diba? Parang, okay. parang go, ganda lang yung pera for the health system, pero hindi mo mapagaling yung, hindi, wala ka ng infrastructure to deliver the quality services na kailangan. So, yeah. uh, meron tayong malaking gap and I wish itong opportunity na to, itong COVID-19. Eh, hindi pa naman huli, may paraon pa rin para gamitin ang pera. I hope yung pera ang uutangin nila, eh, invest nila well and invest it in the health system okay. of the Philippines. Uh, yeah. uh, Governor Bichara, merong BRTTH, no? merong Bicol Regional Teaching and Training Hospital. Sapat na po ba yung uh, ospital natin, yung facilities natin? Uh, for uh, Albay to respond to uh, the pressure from COVID-19? Governor Bichara? Uy, nawala si Governor. Nawala yung signal ni Governor. Ano kayo nangyari? Sa katanduanis po, uh, Governor Kua, would you say you have enough facilities? Uh, yeah. Hello? Oh, yes. Ma'am, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, of course. Uh, well, uh, ang, uh, as far as facilities, uh, uh, mayroon kami ginawang uh, COVID uh, ward, but not with the standard of uh, the, the ano, do it. Kasi ang standard ng, uh, ng uh, COVID ward is you have a separate uh, CR, separate, uh, may, mga, um, may mga requirements sila. But then, uh, uh, nagkaroon kami temporary ward for COVID you know, uh -huh. ngayon. But, uh, uh, yun. Uh, kaya lang, being an island, uh, county ang ano namin. Halos wala kaming COVID uh, uh, positive. Kaya lang, nagkaroon lang kami two weeks ago. Yun nga, doon sa kuro nito nung kay Dr. Ted Herbosa to dahil nga hmm. may, may issue kapi dito sa dalawang nag-positive na OFW na nagkaroon sila ng quarantine certificate without waiting for the swab results. Yeah. Uh, ano nangyari? Then, uh, nakatawid siya without that uh, uh, testing result, that swab result, ano? So, nakatawid siya sa Coast Guard, sa Tabaco. Then, ang nag-inform, nakatawid siya sa amin, the good thing is, the good thing is yung, uh, yung pasyente yon, yung, uh, we call it, uh, ang codename namin doon is Asian 82 ng Bicol Region is uh, aware siya, kasi ang sabi niya, nung, nung in-interview namin siya, aware siya na kasi yung COVID niya sa Saudi, positive. So aware siya. Pero, hmm. ang uh, nalaman kasi namin yun after, after a day. Katawid siya ngayon, kinabukas na nalaman. Kasi tumawag na yung quarantine na uh, bureau na, na positive yung tumawid sa amin. So, uh, ang, ang question ngayon is, Alam ko lahat ng OFW at alam ko lahat ng ngaling abroad, ROF, OFW, or mga turistang o balik baya na galing abroad, dumadaan sa swab test. Mm -hmm. And uh, for quarantine sila or kung yung may pera, nag-hotel na accredited ng DOH or DOT. So then, uh, waiting for the result, 3 to 5 days. Kahit mag-10 days ka doon, kung nagkaroon ng uh, abiria yung uh, system, Kahit 15 days, wala pang result. Hindi ka makakalabas ng quarantine area or hotel. So in the case ng patient A to namin dito, without the, wala pa yung test result, nakatawid na may quarantine certificate na. Kaya yun ang kinequestion namin sa Bureau of Quarantine. Bakit ganun? Sana wala kami positive dito. Uh, in fact, Mel, uh, we are, uh, we're enjoying an island na uh, siyempre pag isla kami, ay isolated kami, ay talaga ang medyo ang, ang risk namin kakaunti. Sana kung walang abiri ang ganito nangyayari, sana hanggat ngayon na uh, COVID-free pa kami, Mel. Yeah, I can understand. Uh, Doc Elbosan, would you please to that? Yes, Governor Gua, kamusta po? <laughs> Last time tayo nagkita, may caller na dyan sa katanduan. Pumunta kami ni Secretary Ona. Eh, tama po yung sinasabi niyo lahat. Ano? Uh, ang nangyari yata dyan, yung kasabay ng media response na, na, na nagreklamo na yung mga OFW dahil 26 days na sila. So ang nangyari, na-release ang ibang OFW na more than 14 days. Kasi ang sabi nila, naka-14 days na yan, walang symptoms, pa-uwiin na yan. Di ba? Parang kahit wala pa yung test, pa-uwiin na. 
eh, ito, kagaya nitong OFW na kinukwento nyo, upon your investigation, turns out, eh, may, eh, siya ay close contact. Hindi siya dapat ipauwi. Kung maganda ang interview sa kanya or kung naging siyang honest na may kasamahan siya sa bahay doon sa country of origin na nag-positive, palagay ko dapat hindi siya pina, pina, pinauwi. Dapat hinintay talaga yung test kasi ang tawag sa kanya, close contact. Nung dating kategory natin, PUM yan eh. Person under monitoring kasi na-contact siya. So mag, uh, kahit naman nakalusot, may secondary safeguard, uh, na-pick up nyo, no? na-inform ka agad kayo. I hope dyan sa Katanduanes, hindi siya nagkalat. Hindi siya naging index case. So ang tawag po doon ay imported case. Mm -hmm. So kontakta doon. At yung only case is the case of what is called an uh, imported case. Diba? Yung din tawag natin sa China noon eh. Yung tatlong positive dating una, ayaw pang magdeklara ng DOH kasi nga, hindi naman nagkaroon pa ng local transmission. So, hindi pa siya nakahawa ng iba. So, kung na-pick na up nyo to, nakuha yung result at na-quarantine siya, na-isolate siya, ay hindi na siya makakahawa ng iba. So, yun, yung, yun naman yung job ng mga local chief executive to make sure na yung yung ating cases, libo po yan. Eh, kaya mag-apologize din talaga kami. Eh, 47,000 yan yung pinauwi sa mga iba't iba probinsya. Hindi mo masasabing perfect yung system. Ini-improve pa rin siya. They're still improving it. At ang test po, ang PCR test, pag ginawa siya, hindi necessarily negative. Eh, 100% negative. May tinatawag tayong false negative. Pagka hindi masyadong maganda yung pagkaswab, medyo hindi tama yung pagproseso sa laboratory, pwede pong lumabas na false negative yan at mapauwi. At uh, yan yung risk tinatawag natin. Yan ang risk na kailangan i-manage and tama si governor. Maganda yung investigation nila na pick up nila na may, kam may kasamahan pala itong nag-positive. Yun ang fault nung system sa Manila. Dapat nakuha din ng Manila yung information na yon Kasi kung okay. nakuha nila yon isa siya sa people na hindi ko pa uuwiin sa probinsya kasi baka magkalat siya doon. Yeah, okay. Uh, Babi, mula sa airline industry, uh, sa inyong grupo, are you satisfied with the measures being implemented by the government bago pumasok sa airport? Yes. Oh, meron kaming early on, the ACAP and the Department of Transportation, CAAP, uh, CAB, at saka MIAA. We forge a common health sanitation guidelines, no? Because as I said, nga malakas yung interdependency in the airport complex, particularly in maintaining the health standards, no? So may kasunduan na kami between the airlines and the airport and civil aviation regular authorities on how to go about it. And uh, sa, sa amin pananaw, uh, I, you know, the, all the infrastructure, I may use that term, in terms of uh, thermal scanning, the social distancing, the notices, and the visibility of of people to remind the passengers no about uh, uh, maintaining the the proper uh, distances nakikita naman namin yan no and our own people or uh, the individual representatives of the carriers are also visible in making sure that the passengers are reminded no to maintain all of these protocols ah okay very well but let me ask you: With the social or physical distancing, will airlines survive? Well, we would like to. The first, the most important thing is nakapagumpisa kami na lumipad, no? Because theoretically, that is the start of recovery that you are able to fly again. Now, whether we can sustain uh, our operation, uh, that is another question. Uh, that is why humihingi kami ng tulong sa government. We have asked uh, the executive branch and the legislative branch uh, to alleviate our conditions. Ang una naming request is really just credit guarantees. No? Uh, 
hindi naman cash ito. Uh, credit guarantees will simply address the liquidity problem of the airlines. Mm. Uh, meron kami yung mga credit lines with private banks. But the private banks are not lending the money because we have not been operating. And of course, they are afraid that we may not be able to repay them. So only government really is in a position to break this crisis of confidence in the banking yeah. sector. But would you confirm reports? Cash yan, ano? Guarantee lang yan. And it, it will be repaid. That is the important thing that we would like to stress. Yeah. Repay this. Would you confirm the report I said a while ago that about 200 were separated from an airline company because of uh, financial difficulties? Yes, uh, there was an announcement by one of the local carriers that uh, the, the financial burden no, of maintaining uh, your current workforce when your operations is very small uh, is not sustainable. So you have to cut your costs somewhere. And uh, aside from cutting personnel, you will have to return some of those aircraft. And certainly, uh, on a global basis, you will have nearly all airlines uh, becoming smaller, returning those aircraft. Kasi the, the volume of traffic will simply not come back until what people predict in three years' time. No? So okay. the, the various professionals and uh, aviation bodies have said that it'll take three years before uh, returning to 2019 traffic levels. So it will take you three years. Oh, okay. May tanong ang ating kasama sa media. Uh, yes, uh, Jackie Manabat, please go ahead. Hi, I'm uh, Jackie Manabat of ABS CBN News. Hello, Jackie. Yeah. Uh, I'm mobile now, so uh, no no video, so this the signal won't be interrupted. May okay. I ask Governor Kwa of Katanduan, yes. how did you find out that the passenger is COVID-19 positive? Oh. And what did you do after learning the situation? This is alarming. How was your team able to cross? Is it the bus? Is it via aviation? I mean, this could have happened um, with other passengers as well. Find out, sir. Governor, how do you know that you and what you did and what you did and what you did and what you did and what you did. Actually, tumawag yung national quarantine. Nag-inform sa amin that yung nakatawid sa amin na uh, na OFW is positive. Nasa Katanduanes na. Nakapasok na ng one day, nag-inform sila nung buti na lang yung ano, yung uh, yung uh, OFW yung hour siya na ang hindi ko nga alam kung alam niyang positive siya or sinasabi niya along the way yung ka-office mate niya sa Saudi nag-positive kaya medyo nag iwas daw siya kasi nagda-trace na kami contact tracing na kami ang sabi niya nag sa barko pa lang kasi na on board siya sa chartered bus ng OFW ay ng OWA ang problema nagaroon siya ng transmission ata doon sa patient entity na kasabay niya sa bus nung nagpa nag-contact tracing kami yung isang OFW na taga San Andres so nagpinaswab test sa amin nag-positive din so we have two cases of positive uh, uh, patient COVID uh, positive dito na OFW with the same bus uh, chartered by OWA kasabay nung uh, yung isang uh, positive talaga but then uh, yun nga sabi ko yung 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 duda siyang positive because may kasama siyang roommate na positive sa Saudi uh, medyo aware siya hindi siya malapit sa mga sa ferry nag-iiwas sa tao Hanggang siya nag-volunteer siya, nag uh, ayaw niya ng home quarantine, gusto niya sa facilities. But yung isang uh, OFW, ano, uh, negative siya eh. eh. Along the way, umuwi sa pamilya, yan ang problema namin ngayon. Kaya nag-lockdown kami sa isang barangay. And then uh, nag-contact nag, uh, nag -contact tracing kami. So we have 19 uh, person na pinaswab test namin na uh, waiting for the result sa ngayon. Ah, okay. Jackie, any follow up? Okay. So, um, you mean the dynamic nila from uh, Manila? 
Medyo bago yung signal. Bago yung signal. I could hardly understand it. Parang mga uh, may interference. But anyway, uh, yung biyahe from Manila, uh, chartered ng OWA, right? Governor? Yes. Uh, ah, okay. It's a bus charter ng OWA. Ang problema doon, nag-umpisa yun sa Quezon, ano? So, along the way, from Manila, yung mga OFW, yung mga baba kung saan destination. So, so from Quezon, nakikita ko sa, may manifesto ako, na sa Quezon may bumababa, Lucena, and then kung saan-saan. Yung Bicol ata, apat lang sila may bumababa sa Kamsur, dalawang katanduanes. Ah, okay. Thank you for the information. Governor Bichara, paano po ninyo hinandian yung mga ayun sa nabanggit sa akin ng aking kaibigang si Father Ino Cueto na sa halip na tampong bus yung madadalo eh laging dalawang po at malaking tulong yun hindi sa aircon yung mga bus as recommended by our good friends and good friends Oops, and the report. Mm-hmm. Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. I, I we could hear you now. So how did you have mga taga albay lang talaga isin na kayo ng mga bus na yon? Yes, dahil is nag-appeal na sila. Umiyak na yung iba. Dahil wala na yung trabaho. Wala na yung mga puntahan. At dumadami sila. So, ang contact namin yung baklaran dahil gusto namin documented lahat ang pupunta sa amin. Saka sila na mag-aayos ng mga certification sa health. Saka yung mga whereabouts nila. And most of all, may rapid testing na. Pareho din sa Quezon City, kay Mayor Joel De Monte, before they leave, nakaraan yung rapid test. So lahat ng darating dito, dadaan lahat sa rapid testing. Yeah. I heard from my colleagues na hindi aircon yung bus para maiwasan yung contamination, so to speak. At appreciated naman yun ng mga media na nag-cover nung inyong umuwi na locally stranded individuals. Uh, would you still have locally stranded individuals in Baclaran? Yes, we have plenty. Marami. And uh, sa Quezon, more than uh, siguro well, less than 100 sa Quezon City. Pero sa, sa Baclaran, uh, more than 800. Really? Or, uh, almost 1,000. Wow. So we have 40, 40 uh, buses now. Uh, Alis, yung mga stranded din dito, pinasakay na rin namin with uh, the appropriate uh, documents na tinulungan ng mga, ng mga tao namin dito sa yeah. provincial government. You have uh, BRTTH in Legazpi City. You have district hospitals in Tabaco and in Ligao. Uh, meron pa rin mga maliliit na ospital. Uh, are this enough to address concerns of uh, probable COVID-19 infection? I think so. Dahil uh, hindi pa naman masyadong rampant yung, yung virus dito. And mostly kasi yung mga, maka, yung mga pumasok dito ay yung mga, mga, yung mga sumama sa mga car trucks. Uh, so nagbayad sila sa mga drivers. Eh, hindi pwede itigil yung mga sa boundary, yung mga cargo trucks. So, nag-sideline natin yung ibang drivers. So, pinasakay sila. Yun, may mga iba doon, positive. Saka na, nagkaroon ng ano, uh, tipong nagkaroon ng breach sa protocol yung mga health workers sa VRTTH. Ay, uh, meron doon yung iba, miscongeniality. So, masyadong ano, umiikot ng ikot, eh, may nahawa sila. There was even a time na dumami yung mga health workers na... Na-quarantine? Na-quarantine na, 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 na dahil doon. Eh. 
But now they have corrected it. They have uh, rectified everything already. But meron pang isa uh, health worker. Eh, siguro, para niya wala. Pero nag-negative din. So anyhow, uh, manageable pa naman dito. Hindi masyado. So we are taking this opportunity to pick up all these uh, ito mga stranded albayanos sa Metro Manila dahil pag na new normal eh, baka wala na yung mga border control eh, labas-pasok na eh, mas mahirap na may trace eh. mm-hmm. so kinuha na namin yun para mas madali darating sila dito documented lahat sila eh. saka Ano yung device nyo for contact tracing? <coughs> Meron kami team sa bawat uh, bayan sa sa probinsya. Excuse me. Um, lahat ng documents nila ay may master list kami. Tapos kung may nag-positive doon, we start the contact tracing. Mm, okay. Uh, Dr. Elbosa, let me ask you, uh, tanong din ng ating kasamang si Jackie Manabat at uh, isang reporter from PTV4. Uh, puzzle draw si Jackie Manabat, paano nakapagbiyahe without proper documents, test, quarantine, pass, etc. Yun ang impression na nakikreate. Uh, I think nangyari lang yan dun sa Clamor, yung first batch. I think may natirang 27,000 in our quarantine facilities that were complaining and parang 26 days na sila na naghihintay ng result, uh, nakita rin yung root of the problem there. Eh. Parang ang Red Cross binigay yung result sa DOH. Yung DOH hindi na ipasa sa quarantine. Yung quarantine hindi nabigay sa OWA. So parang may breakdown then in the sending of the results. So hopefully makokorek na yan kasi na-identify kung saan nagka-problema. So ang nangyari doon, dahil marami naman lampas na doon sa 14 days, binigyan na rin ng Bureau of Quarantine noong Certificate of Quarantine. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng Certificate of Quarantine. No? The Certificate of Quarantine uh, certifies that the person has completed the quarantine period. In this case, it's 14 days minimum. Okay. Yung isa is the test result. So dapat yan, dalawa yan, eh, tatlo yan, pati yung medical certificate pa. Yung medical certificate na examine sila ng doktor at hindi sila nagmamanifest ng any symptoms. I think health check lang eh. Health checklist lang yata ang okay. hinihingi sa kanila. Okay. Aamin yung pasyente, yung, yung pasyente, yung OFW na wala siyang sore throat, lagnat, ubo, sipon, wala siyang symptoms. Number two, meron siyang Bureau of Quarantine uh, quarantine certificate na complete na yung 14 days. At pangatlo, yung RT-PCR result niya na negative. Yung RT-PCR kasi, May additional gastos pagka humingi sila ng isang certificate. So, ang nangyayari, print out ang binilalabas. So, yung print out, nahanapin mo lang yung pangalan mo doon. Parang yung pumasa ka sa test, hanapin mo. Uh-huh. Parang sa UPCAT, ano? Parang, oh, parang sa UPCAT. Oh, pag wala yung pangalan mo, bagsa ka, no? Oo, oh, pag wala ka doon. <laughs> so, nakalagay doon na negative. Ito yung mga test result nyo. Okay. So, pag nandun pangalan mo, negative ka. Pwede, uh, kompleto ka na. Pero... Okay. Nagkaroon yan ng ano, ako I think that's a lapse and because of all the pressure and ngayon kinokorek na natin yan at uh, uh, I think tama yung sinabi ni Robert no, hinintungan namin yung airlines for one week eh, dahil napuno yung quarantine facility sa dami ng OFW and ang mga repercussions dito may nagpakamatay pa yata ng OFW. Meron, meron, meron. Oh. Oo, so kita mo ang yung ano, Duktong-duktong eh. Yung action mo na akala mo tama, may unintended consequences. So, okay. Uh, uh, sabi ni, ina-improve na. Ina-improve na. Doc, proseso. sabi ni uh, Jackie, nakita raw niya yung mga pasahero na magkakatabi sa OWA buses. Walang physical distancing. Pero nakamak. Oh, oh, that means pinag- siniksik talaga nila. Siyempre, gastos din yan eh. If you have 100 people, eh, 50 ang laman na isang bus yata. 50 oh, or less. Oh. Eh, pag pinagsiksik mo yun talaga, eh, eh Pag niluwagan mo yun, 25 lang per bus, mas madaming gastos yun. Kasi mas maraming bus ang magamitin mo pa uwi. Yes, so, Lord. importante yung face mask at saka sana hindi nila tinanggal at sana hindi sila naghahawakan or whatever yeah. doon. Kahit okay. naman malapit sila, basta naka-face mask sila, nag-alcohol sila doon, palay ko, diminish pa rin yung chance or risk. Kasi ang minamanage dito, risk, wala talagang 100% eh. 
Okay. Diba? Wala talagang 100%. Sige. Yes. Uh, Governor Vichara, yung experience ng Albay, uh, yung ba mga bus may physical distancing? Ayun na nga. That, uh, I, uh, yun nga yung tatanong ko kay Doc. No? Because uh, kararapid test lang nila. Bakit magkailangan pa mag, ano, mag social distancing? So you can maximize the utilization of the bus eh, para marami rin ang makasakay. Mm -hmm. Kaya din sa aeroplano, di ba? Dito sa, sa bus, sabi niyo, di pwede ang aircon. Pero sa aeroplano, naka-aircon. So, <laughs> <laughs> That's, na, yun ay ang mga tanong ni Governor. Ano eh, valid yeah. eh. There are very valid questions. In fact, I saw a a Facebook uh, video of ya ang ano tinatawag na risk communication at mali iba-iba yung messaging so so governor you are correct madami pa tayong hindi alam tungkol dito sa illness na to and what works and what doesn't work kasi yun yung problema eh uh, sinasabi ng ibang infectious disease pag enclosed spaces mas malakas yung transmission remember nung una lahat ng problema natin sa ICU ng ospital sa cruise ship di ba tapos sa mga building sa preso sa home for the aged so for the ano so nakita doon na pag enclosed yung spaces mataas yung level of transmission ibig sabihin no nag stay yung virus sa hangin so yeah na, na recommend yan na open space like yung PGH covid ward po hindi pina aircon yon pina open space yon na may positive pressure air exchange four times every hour para maging safe so yun ang ni-recommend doon so nag may mga blowers na malalaki na unidirectional, isang entry, isang exit. So wala pong ano, walang playbook. Yun ang masasabi ko kay governor eh. Uh, there those are very intelligent questions. Yung airplane pressurized po yun. Yun ang sagot ko doon kasi hindi pwedeng buksan yung bintana. Mamamatay po yung mga pasaya, no? Kasi walang oxygen sa taas. Yeah. So yung HEPA filter, yun yung high efficiency filter for bacteria and viruses. Ginagamit po sa operating room at ICU yan. And I'm glad the airline industry uh, put that on. May nakita pa nga akong video sa Singapore Airlines. Bine kasama sa bili ng ticket, yung kanilang PPE. At bago sila sumakay, pinagsuot sila lahat dun sa departure area ng kanilang PPE. So hindi mo na makilala kung sino. So hindi ko alam kung overkill yon, Kung tama yun. So pwedeng overkill yon eh. Kasi nga, kung basta naka-face mask ka at may hand sanitizer ka at uh, hindi ka masyadong nagkakalat ng sakit doon, ma'am. So, so yun ang problema natin dito. There okay. are so much information hindi well, natin alam which is correct and which is not correct. Yun ang yeah. Matter. Okay. Yes, Governor? Yeah. I was wondering yung mga face mask, no? Because normally, lahat is required to wear face mask. But, normally, yung binubuga mo, it's considered waste coming from your body. Tapos, nakasara yung <laughs> pinabalik mo ulit. Yung binubalik mo. Uh, <laughs> mas, yeah. mas, 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 Actually, Governor, maganda ka talagang din yan. Very intelligent question yan. So they say that when you inhale, you inhale the oxygen, 21% lang yung oxygen na kinukuha natin. Actually, pag nag-inhale tayo, 2% lang ng oxygen ang na uh, ano na nakukuha natin. So pag binuga mo 'yan, mas maraming sumama na diyan na carbon dioxide, CO2. So pag buga mo diyan, mas mataas ang CO2. So yung oxygen niyan, pwede mong gamitin uli. In, in fact, 'yan ang principle ng mouth to mouth resuscitation. 'Di ba? Pag merong na emergency, hihipan mo yung bunganga ng ng pasyente kung wala kang ambu bag, uh, hihipan mo kasi yung Buga mong hangin, may oxygen pa rin yun. So, okay lang yon Ang problema, tama din si Governor. Kasi pag yung CO2 mo, nire mo for a long time, magkakaroon ka ng CO2 narcosis. Sasakit ang ulo mo, uh, medyo inaantok ka, medyo sa ibang tao na medyo may sakit sa puso, may nagka-stroke na or may ibang problems, may bad side effects lang ang wearing a face mask for long periods of time. So, inaalis din yan. Dapat aalisin mo yan. Kung solo ka naman sa kwarto, tanggalin mo muna yung mask. Solo ka sa kotse, tanggalin mo yung mask. Pero pag kasama mo yung ibang tao, isuot mo yung mask. But that okay. doesn't mean isuot mo siya 24-7 kasi tama si Governor. Masama din po sa katawan ng tao yung nakamask ng okay. mahabang panahon. 
Yeah. May tanong yung ating kasamang si Clay Pardilla ng Channel 4. Yes, uh, Clay, go ahead. Go ahead with your question. Good morning, Sir Melo, and for our governors, para po sa ating mga governors, aviation sector po kasi is saying na sana idiretsyo na sa kanika nila mga probinsya yung mga OFW. I'm just wondering kung kayo po ba ay pabor din doon na sa inyong mga probinsya na itest yung ating mga OFW. Governor? Again, your question, please. Sir, aviation sector is appealing na sana uh, sa mga kanya-kanya ng probinsya na itas yung ating mga OFW. Are you also in favor of that, sir? Well, it would be better na doon sa point of destination para lahat yung babiyay sa isang, sa isang bus o sa isang sasakyan at least secured sila. Kasi ko na dito, eh, sama-sama sila. Eh, along the way, mahahaway yung iba. So that's our uh, more or less etong position namin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Governor Kuwa of Katanduanas. Uh, Governor, you're still there, of course. Yes? Uh, what's your say doon sa sinasabi ng aviation industry na kung po pwede, doon na lang sa probinsya mismo mag-quarantine yung ating mga OFW? Are you in favor of that, Governor? Yes, Governor. May tanong po, uh, pabor ba kayo na sa Katanduanes na lang mag-test uh, yung mga OFWs? Well, uh, pe dapat hindi sa amin bago pumunta sa amin na test. Na. Pero kung... Uh, Pero kung ano, mas, uh, mas accurate kung Hi. kami... Oh. Is the chairman and CEO of San Miguel Hello. Corporate. Pwede rin, basta as long as may test, uh, may pang test kami kasi kung pwede yung RPD, ano, RPD. Uh, rapid uh, test, okay. Test. Pag yung rapid test, okay lang sa amin yun. But okay. sir, as of now, are you fully equipped with that, with those um, examinations or tests? Uh, sorry? Kaya ba natin, Governor Opokua, kaya po ba natin tumanggap ng mga OFWs without, uh, na hindi pa natitest? Uh, kung pwede, wag muna. Kasi yun nga, yung, yung uh, recent case namin ng positive is galing nga sa OFW na hindi, hindi na test. Ano? Hindi na test. Kaya nag-positive pala yun. Kaya, in fact, yung isang case namin, yung isang kasakay niya sa bus, o oh, chartered o bus nahawa niya nahawa niya mm, okay so uh, mas gusto niyo doon sa pinanggaling niya na muna let's say Manila bago ah, kung pwede ganun sana okay uh, not, not rapid test ha? it should be the R RPTCI test kasi mas accurate yun ah, alright uh, okay. Melo Melo yes Melo okay. magdagdag yes. lang ako no, last week naglipad uh, na ng OFW at eh, itong mga pasahero ay nilan sa Clark sa Clark Airport mga I think almost 2,000 yun eh tapos doon na rin tinest yung meron tayong testing center sa JB Lingad at natuwa nga yung mga OFW kasi ang turnaround time ng test center doon ay 48 hours so after the, by the third day pinauwi na sila sa kanika nilang probinsya sa Luzon so, nag-uumpisa na yan, yung proseso na pag-land sa iba. So, I, I think may nag-uumpisa na rin ng IATF i-allow i-open ng iba-ibang airport. May ibang governor, syempre, ayaw nila i-allow. Kasi nga, uh, pag hindi nila kaya yung capacity to test. For example, Katanduanes, walang RT-PCR dyan. Ang, ang molecular lab ay nasa uh, Albay, sa Legaspi. Nandun kay Governor Bichara yung testing center eh yung research and diagnostic laboratory ano sa uh, regional laboratory so meron doon sa Legaspi so baka dapat ang pauwi ng katanduan is landing sa airport sa Albay sa Legaspi at pagkatapos ma-test na sila and after a few days pwede na silang umuwi ng katanduan is. so parang ganun siguro yung pagbilis uh, ng format nito oh, okay pero sino magbabayad nung stay muna sa Legaspi kung sakali na pakatanduan is yung tao Pag OFW siya na legal, OWA po. OWA nagbabayad nung uh, quarantine stay. Pagka OF siya, or, or overseas Filipino, just returning home, 
sila po yung magbabayad. So ang ang next na dapat gawin ng mga governor ay mag-identify ng specific hotel or specific na dormitory or whatever na uh, doon mo ilalagay yung mga kasi yung mga Yes, we can land to the province, pero pag wala namang quarantine facility yung province, may testing center ka, wala kang quarantine facility. Eh, paano nang gagawin mo? So, pag nag-positive yan, sa mula lagay yan? Sa, sa hospital ba yan? Dapat may COVID ward, gano'n. So, eh, madami to eh. Madami yung OFW eh. Napakarami. Probinsya, probinsya. Napakarami po ang mga kababayan natin talagang bumabalik at wala na rin trabaho doon sa mga bansang pinuntahan nila. So, okay. so big problem po talaga to. At ako, as a doctor, dito ako takot kasi nga whatever system we create may lulusot diyan may lulusot at makakalusot and the experience of governor Kuwa is reality yan po ang reality at dapat maghanda yung mga governor na pag na pick up nyo contact trace agad yung na contact trace i quarantine din yon ang reklamo ng ibang governor na nagpunta kami ng Cebu sabi ni governor Gwen sa amin eh eh sana ako kukuha ng pera pagpakain niya sa mga kinuarantine ko kasi papakainin mo sila three times a day <laughs> or 14 days. So, ubos na rin ang pera ng mga LGU. So, I can imagine yung difficulties. Eh. So, siguro makatulong sana national government. Pero, uh, yan ang mga, ano ngayon, so private sector siguro can help donate the food. Mga ganun ang mga solution. So, bayanihan talaga. Uh, walang playbook. Hindi natin alam. Yung pera, nauubos na yata. Yung <laughs> isang masama dito. Limitado ang government money to support everyone. So, kanya-kanya. Kanya-kanyang, uh, ano tawag dito? Uh, style. Kanya-kanyang style at uh, uh, pamamara pamamaraan. Okay. Uh, yes, Clay. Uh, go ahead with your question. May follow-up ka, Clay? Hi. Sorry, follow up lang po ito ni Ate Jackie since hindi po siya makapasok. At tinatanong lang po niya for Governor Joseph Kuwa kung sumakay po si OFW na nag-positive from PITX or from NAIA? Yes, please. Go well, uh, sumakay siya. Hindi, uh, nag-bus siya from Manila, charter the bus ng OWA to, to Tobacco. No? Kasi... Isla kami. Ang nearest point namin is Tabaco Albay. Doon, doon, nag, doon sumakay sa ferry boat going to Katandukanes. Okay. So, yung so, point of idea. origin, sir, saan po mismo? Saan daw po yung origin? Saan daw mismo sa Owang office? Saan po? Saan kaya galing? Si, di ko lang alam kung saan galing. Okay. PITX, Nanggaling PITX. yan sa quarantine facility nila. PITX. World Trade Center, PITX. World Trade Down. Sa World Trade Down nanggaling. Okay. And then, okay, copy that, and, Governor. Governor. Go ahead, Bob. Go ahead. Go ahead with the yes, question. Yes, Governor. Uh -huh. Ano yung tanong yes. mo? Sir, pwede pong pa-continue lang with the RC, Governor Kua. Actually, sa Tabaco, may, may nag-allocate si Mayor Chris Lagman ng Tabaco City ng quarantine facilities namin sa uh, Tabaco National High School. So may area kami doon for quarantine. No? Yung mga takakatanduanes na kulang ang papel, uh, na umuwing SLI, OFW, ROF, Pag uh, may kulang ang papel, doon namin kinakwarantin. Ah, nagpapakain doon yung probinsya. Ah, Nag-cater nag, 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 uh, kami doon na uh, pinapakain yung mga estrandil doon ng Takakatanduanes. So, yun nga, yung problema namin ngayon, yun nga yung, yung umuwi na wala pang uh, medical result na nakatawid. Uh, yun ang naging problema namin lately for last week yun, last week na nangyayari. Kaya sana ano sana uh, kung may mga ang high risk yung mga galing abroad mga OFW sana kung ma-release man diyan sa Manila dapat na uh, situit na uh, may may test result talaga para hindi na mangyari yung nangyari sa amin dito. Ah okay. Uh, thank you, Governor. Okay. Uh, Governor Al, let me ask you uh, if we look forward, what do you see would be the headwinds na haharapin ng probinsya dahil sa may crisis na dulot itong pandemic na ito? Well, we have to live with it, no? 
Kasi tam, sinabi ni Doc kanina, Dr. Boss, eh, Yusek, eh, hindi talaga makawala ito. Habang uh, kahit na new normal na tayo, may lilitaw pa rin. Pero karamihan naman ng uh, casualty, gaya sa amin, marami kaming cases na positive pero tapos naging negative. More or less curable eh. Yung mga namatay na tatlo dito sa probinsya ng Albay, eh karamihan, mga, may mga komplikasyon na sa katawan nila at uh, senior citizens. So, I don't know, baka, baka na-exaggerate masyado ito yung COVID na ito. Kasi mas mataas pa rin ang cases ng HIV sa mga, eh, mga diabetes sa kanilang iba pa dyan. Eh. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, ang malaki lang yung collateral damage nito. Eh. Kasi marami na wala ng trabaho, marami sumarang negosyo. So I don't know, uh, saan kung kuha ang pera ng gobyerno natin, kulang ng babae ng buwis, at babagsak yung mga... Uh, yung mga revenues ng mga LGUs at the national government. So, that's quite a big problem. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sandali po, Governor. Uh, Babi, may patanong dito. Uh, given the adjustments to implement health and safety protocol, yung charted bus, face mask, transport, tests, etc., uh, is the aviation industry looking into applying for a fair hike? Nakatakot yung tanong yan. Yes. Well, uh, at, the, at the moment, uh, I think the, the main objective of the airline industry is to resume flights. Kasi ngayon, I, uh, roughly, you only have about maybe 5-7% to 7% of the normal uh, volume of flights undertaken by the local aviation industry. So yun muna ang primary objective to fly to more destinations and to fly more frequency to the major destinations like Cebu, Davao, Legazpi. Yun ang primary objective no? before we, we even think of uh, bringing up the, the fares. Yes. The second one, of course, is to bring, uh, bring back the confidence of the riding public to, to take air transport, no? which is still the most convenient. Uh, yun, yun ang ano, those are the immediate issues of the airline industry. Okay. Uh, na, na itanong ko kasi yan sa isang press briefing sa Malacanang kung uh, meron bang subsidy na nakalaan para sa industriya. Ang sabi ng uh, natanong ko e eh, bahala yung DOTR at yung Department of Tourism. May signal ba na magsa-subsidy ang gobyerno sa airline industry? Well, uh, walang napag-uusapan about subsidy. Um, hinihiling lang ng industriya and in our conversations with with the legislators no? and when they were preparing the PESA bill, ang hinihiling lang ng airline industry is one, is yung credit guarantee para mabigyan ng solusyon yung liquidity crisis ng airlines. No? Uh, we have explained to the legislators and to the executive branch that on the average, the fixed cost of the Philippine carriers is about 7 billion pesos a month. So when you're not flying, you still have to pay that fixed cost. And uh, that has been the financial burden to the airline the past two and a half months. That's why the, we are very eager to restart operations so that we can generate revenue. Now, in terms of support, ang hinihiling namin, sana i-waive yung mga navigational charges. Parking charges, take-off and landing charges. Uh, umaabot na ng mga 500 million pesos a month yan for the local carriers. No? So, ang hinihiling namin, sana i-waive nila for until February next year or December this year, malaking tulong yan sa cash flow. No? Okay. Okay. Tanong pa others would be loans na hindi uh, namin. No? Uh, hindi naman siguro classify dito, uh, Bobby, pero ano yung ballpark figure ng losses sa aviation industry since the lockdown? Well, yung, yung first quarter first quarter losses ng uh, carriers is about Siguro mga 6 billion pesos no? first quarter yon. Mm-hmm. But 
that will really, you know, go up. I mean, IATA has, has estimated for the Philippines a very large loss of uh, billions of, of pesos already. Okay. Mahirap kasi yung walang revenue eh. Talagang, okay. you know, you, you're out on a limb. There's, there's nowhere you can man, uh, maneuver or uh, to, to cut down costs. You can cut down costs only up to a point. And the airlines have tried to keep the 25,000 employees intact uh, as much as possible, but you know, uh, hindi din kakayanin yan, hindi yan sustainable uh, given the present level of uh, operation of the airlines. No? Okay. Uh, People have to right size. No? All right. Yung losses na yan, hindi naman matatranslate yan sa magiging kakulangan sa maintenance ng aeroplano. Hindi, hindi. Hindi pwede yun. No. Well, baka mamaya eh, dapat mag-change oil na, wag muna. No, no, no. That's... <laughs> Hindi obra. Standard product na, uh, that, that is a very unhealthy practice. That is a very unhealthy practice. Because that will, again, uh, that, is, uh, that will just defeat the purpose of bringing back confidence to the riding public. Uh, yeah. And definitely that's counterproductive. Yeah. God but certainly for... less, less aircraft. Less aircraft. There will be less aircraft flying. Uh, the airlines uh, will definitely have to return aircraft to lessors. Mm -hmm. uh, because the, the volume of traffic is not going to come back until three years later. No? Until three years later. That is the general prediction of uh, IATA and the IKO and other uh, professional bodies. No? In the Philippines, uh, siguro ang, the nice thing about the Philippines is that we have the potential of domestic tourism. Uh, we have 100 million. Uh, population we have 7000 islands and if the if if this lockdown will unleash uh, the traveling public to travel all around, all around the philippines uh, eventually then that will be good for the aviation sector mm -hmm. and again based on uh, professional predictions domestic tourism and domestic travel will really be the first sector that will uh, launch or relaunch and restart you know? Okay. Pero meron kasing programa yung gobyerno. Bawal muna yung mga biyahe, mga konferensya at mga pagpupulong outside Metro Manila. Kung pwede, virtual na lang. Eh, will it not impact uh, sa aviation industry? Uh, definitely may impact yan, Mel. Uh, this is the new normal that we have to deal with. Uh, it's not only tourism, but corporate business uh, travel is affected. Uh, and uh, in, in connection with business travel, we are asking the government. In fact, we, we met last week with the uh, representatives of the aviation sector in government to tell them that maybe the preparation should be undertaken to allow corporate and business travel to the Philippines. Okay. Kasi nagkakaroon na ng protocol dyan eh. Uh, we can require, let's say, expats who have to visit factories or who have to man the BPOs. Or you have investors who want to come to the Philippines. They are, they are foreigners. The general rule right now is you cannot come to the Philippines. Uh -huh. But if it is for a non-leisure and business purpose, pwede mo sigurong payagan yan provided, number one, they take the rapid test, PCR test from their point of origin at their own cost. Okay. Uh, you can subject them to other documentary requirements to show that the purpose of travel is for business, not for leisure. Okay. And then you can create travel corridors. You can also select the countries where you will extend this relaxation of business travel. Countries that have already shown that they have uh, contained the COVID uh, pandemic in their own countries would be a, a country that you would want to extend this uh, relaxed yeah. policy. Yeah, okay. Plan. All right. Governor Kuwa, let's look forward. Anong pwedeng asahan ng mga mamamayan sa inyong liderato sa Katanduanes? Governor? Governor? Uy, wala. Wala si Governor. Si Go yes, Governor. Yes, please. 
what can people uh, expect of your leadership uh, for Catanduanes? Anong pwedeng asahan sa inyo? Yes, Governor. Hello. Uh, yes. Anong sorry. pwedeng lauman <laughs> sa inyong liderato sa Catanduanes? <laughs> Uh, from, uh, uh, on what, ano, on what issue? Well, uh, of course, you, you have the problems brought about by uh, the COVID-19. You have a lack of jobs. Uh, economy, no health. Oh, yes, of course. So, what do we expect from you? Uh, in terms of uh, health, ano, medyo, uh, don't, uh, from the barangay naman, medyo maingat ang mga, medyo aware ang mga barangay. Pag may mga bagong lumabas sa tao, talaga nag-iimbisiga tayo. Or pag may naka-home quarantine, talaga pag lumabas, binabantayan nila. So, so medyo cooperative ang barangay sa atin, kaya medyo tayo nahihirapan. And in terms of uh, economy naman, siyempre maraming uh, apektado ang mga negosyo. So, again, the good thing of Katanduan is our main product is abaka. It's an export market, kaya, kaya habang may COVID, tumataas ang presyo ng abaka. So, yun ang isang advantage sa amin. But, of course, maraming walang trabaho. Maraming LSI na uuwi from Manila na nagtatrabaho sa Manila. And then, uh, siyempre, pag nandito, eh, wala rin trabaho. Sa, sana, sana magkaroon, tayo, mag magkaroon ng program ang national government for kung ano ang pwedeng uh, livelihood na ibigay natin in terms of uh, project o kung Problema, siyempre, pati yung national project apektado. Kaya yung construction sana, isang bagay yun na makakatulong. Kasi mara may maraming project, maraming may bigyan ng trabaho. So, and then kung ano ang pwedeng uh, may bigay, of course, may maliit lang ang katanduan. Yes, maliit ang income. We are 98% uh, era dependent. Kaya, uh, lag lagang umaasa kami sa national government kung ano yeah. ang pwedeng itulong sa atin. Apo. Yeah, Governor, may tanong po yata ng uh, Channel 4. Governor, sorry, para lang po klaro po yung detalye. Uh, kailan po ulit dumating yung dalawang OFW? Uh, dumating, uh, I think uh, June 8. June 8. And as of now, sir, naka-quarantine na po sila? Naka-quarantine sila sa RHU, sa LGU, LGU facilities. Mga mild cases. Okay. Sige po. Sir, kunin po namin naman yung number niyo para po iba to po okay. namin sa so, okay. 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 office. Uh, Dr. Sir Ted. Dr. Ted, yes. Hi, Sir Ted. Yes. Hi. Uh -huh. Yes, Ted. Uh, go ahead. Sir Ted, sorry. Opo. Um, pasingit lang po ng opisina. Sir, ito pong nangyari sa Katanduanes. Sir, saan po itong laps? OWA, DOTR, DOH, saan po kaya? Uh, uh, hindi, hindi tayo nagbe-blame ng any office. No? It's called the system lapse. Pag nag-root cause analysis ka, this uh, repatriation is a uh, responsibility of task force, uh, repat ta task force repat. So it's a task force under the national, under na national task force, meron kaming subgroup, merong task force repatriation. So madaming kasama dyan from uh, POEA, OWA, Dole, DILG, uh, lahat, lahat kasale, uh, and uh, this is headed by Yusek Yano, I think, um, um, ang pinaka-chief nito. So, nire-review nila yan, uh, ina-analyze yan, uh, nakikita namin yung criticism ng media, and the task force is uh, improving the system as it, as it goes. So, we're not out to blame any single person. So, Pero and I improved sure lahat yun. Opo, pero tama na dapat. Approach. Opo, uh, bago sila maka-uwi, ay may, dapat nasa swab talaga sila. That's, yes, um, um, that's the policy. requirement. Yes, the policy is uh, upon arrival, magkakaroon sila ng swabbing and PCR, uh, RT-PCR test. Now, uh, after that, pag may result, ngayon ang proseso is pauuwiin na sila to their home province or home locality at si local chief executive ang bahala. Either they can decide dahil negative, home quarantine, or they can decide uh, community quarantine kung meron silang community quarantine. Siyempre, mas maganda yung home quarantine. Pero dapat bantayan yun ng local chief executive kung talagang ma-implement yon sa bahay. So, karamihan ng local mm -hmm. chief executive, 
para safe. Mm-hmm. Nag-build sila ng community quarantine. Kagaya dyan ni Governor Kua, ginamit siya yung RHU. So doon nila pinatira muna yung positive nila para hindi siya makahawa. Walang local transmission. So yan ang, yan ang first job ng ating local chief executive. Prevent. Prevent. Na. Na-detect mo, prevent mo na maghawa siya ng iba. So okay. kaya natin sila sure, in-isolate. Opo, Sir mm-hmm. Ted, ibig sabihin pa to prevent this incident, paano po yun? Bago sasakay ng bus, kailangan isa-isa muna na chinecheck yung kanilang mga certificate. Ano po? Correct. Uh, b- bago sila i- mag- masama dun sa passenger manifest, nakuha na nila yun lahat. Yung medical certificate, yung kanilang quarantine uh, certificate, at yung kanilang test result. So yun yung mga, yun yung tatlong ano. Uh, ginagawa. Ang delay natin is really the test result kasi libo-libo yung umuwi. So ngayon dahil napabilis na yan, itong huling eroplano na bumalik sa sa Clark natuwa yung mga OFW kasi within 3 to 5 days nasa home home province na sila. Different parts of the zone. So, so it's exactly the opposite of yung mga nababasa nilang nangyari dun sa ating first batch na nagkagulo-gulo. So talagang hindi maganda yung sistema nung unang batch. So, But uh, na-improve na siya. Would you say we have now have enough mechanisms to avoid similar incidents? Uh, the, alam na natin yan. We, we now know that there is a problem. We now have the safety nets to prevent those. Pero takot pa rin ako sa volume ng uuwi. Kasi ang dami pa hong naghihintay umuwi. <laughs> It's just uh, repatriation flights that uh, are needed. So, I think another 50,000 yata yung estimate or 100,000, hindi ko alam, parang 75,000 OFWs are still waiting to come home. Ganun okay. kalaki po. Uh, Ganun advanced kalaki. information, uh, merong 5,300 mula sa Saba na naghihintay Saba. na pauwiin sa Pilipinas. Illegal migrants sila na hinuli oh. ng Malaysian authorities sapagkat meron silang uh, strictong kampanya laban sa COVID-19. Uh, doon sa lugar. So lahat ng illegal hinuli, dinitain. Ang problema ay daw tanggapin ng Pilipinas which DFA downplayed at ang sabi, they're attending to everyone. The problem is, these are not OFWs but illegal migrants. But Secretary uh, said, Teka muna, teka muna, Melo. Protocol for that. Teka muna, the illegal yan base sa Saba, sa hmm. pamahalaan ng Saba. Pero yung mga taong yan, Usually yan, mga indigenous yan, yung mga bajaw at yung mga iba-ibang ano, na talagang dyan sila nakatira. Yan ang problema dyan eh. Pag election dyan sa Saba, registered sila, bumuboto. Pag ganitong may COVID, pauuwiin sila sa Tawi-Tawi, sa Hulo. Pero wala, hindi naman yan nakatira na sa atin. So may issue dyan ng citizenship, no? Sila ba ay illegal dahil hindi nila recognize na citizen sila ng Malaysia? Or yan ba ay eh, talagang nanggaling sa Pilipinas na nag-illegal na nagpunta dyan? Hindi natin alam. So yan ang declaration. So ano yan? Medyo foreign policy issue yan, no? Yeah. Kasi nga, di ba? <laughs> Medyo conflicting yan. So hayaan na natin siguro yung Department of Foreign Affairs i-handle yan. Kasi that will just increase our conflict with Malaysia. If we, uh-huh. eh, ano, basta pag-usapan yan kasi nga, para hindi naman tama na paalisin mo kung diyan pinanganak, diyan na tumira, diyan na lumaki, wala lang siyang identity card na Malaysian, e pauuwiin mo saan? Sa Pilipinas. E wala din, hindi din siya rehistrado sa Pilipinas. Uh-huh. <laughs> Indigenous. One, uh, one thing is sure, hindi na siya pwede mag-ari ng isang radio television network. Well, question. <laughs> Ba- <laughs> hindi, kung ma-prove niya, ah, nana, mali yan, mali yan. Kung ma-prove niya na ang nanay at tatay niya ay Uh, bona fide citizens of the Philippines and natural born Filipino siya yeah. kahit pinangalak siya sa Saba <laughs> may narinig akong ganyan eh may Diyos Uli, Diyos Sanguines at may Diyos ko po <laughs> <laughs> Diyos ko po talaga Diyos, But Diyos anyway, ko po hindi yung topic natin uh, si Governor Al Francis Bichara baka nasa linya pa Governor, we're about to end our program uh, today uh, we'd like to listen to what you have to say mm-hmm. teka uh, Governor Kua Message para sa ating mga kasama sa media. Please go ahead. Yes, yeah. Governor. Thank you, Mel, for the opportunity. Yes. And sana, again, yung, yung about COVID, uh, sana yung mga 
again, yung mga OFW na na umuwi dapat naman siguro sa bagong magkakaroon ng travel uh, quarantine uh, certificate or travel pass, uh, dapat may result muna ng, ano, ng, ng swab test okay. or uh, RP PCR test para mas accurate yung kaysa COVID test uh, para hindi tayo magkaroon ng ganitong uh, similar case or na nag-positive dahil nga sa lapses ng national uh, agency. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Governor, for your time. And probably we can do a picture on Apaka one of these days. When things get better. Okay. Salamat po. Thank you. Salamat. Good. Governor Al Francis Bichara, para sa mga taga-albay at mga iba pang kasama natin na nanonood at uh, nakikinig sa atin, please go ahead with your message. Well, uh, dito sa albay, wala naman masyadong problema. Uh, everything, uh, lahat ng mga tao yan, tatanim ng mga backyard uh, garden sila para maging self-sufficient. And nagbubukas na rin pa konti-konti. Yung ibang nawala na hanap ng buhay, kanya-kanyang discount eh. Sila nagluluto, tapos may mga deliveries sa pagkain. And uh, they become more, uh, sabihin natin, more resourceful. Kasi pag wala nang choice, hanap ng paraan para kumita rin sila. And, uh, well, uh, we're looking forward to a, a, a better, no? uh, a better day. Okay. Siguro pag nag uh, new normal, eh, yun lang ang uh, natin. Eh, matagal ito. Kasi kung naisipin natin, eh, talagang na-damage yung ekonomiya natin dito. Mm -hmm. It will take time. Ilang bases pa po yung padadala nyo sa Maynila para sunduin nyo ating mga kababayan? 40, 40 bases. 40. Today, nagsialisa na darating sa Maynila bukas and then outright after after uh, yung rapid test padis kagad sila so that's the i think the third trip na pangatlong trip na ito okay so we're trying to treat them. kasi kawawa eh nasa yung iba talaga umiyak na eh mm -hmm. wala nang wala nang pera sa bulsa nila uh, really have to go home it's cheaper to stay here yeah. pero pasiguro lang namin rapid test Para kung mag-negative, iwan sila doon at uh, i-refer na sa, sa mga government hospitals. Okay. Nagpapakumusta nga pala si Father Ino Kweto ng Redemptorist Church. Uh, thank you very much <laughs> sa mga, uh, mga Redemptorist Church. Malaking bagay ito. Uh -huh. so, <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Until next time. Okay. Uh, okay. Mayor Joy Belmonte. Okay. Very good. Salamat po, uh, Governor. Uh, Thank mula. you for having me. Yes. Yeah, of course. We will have you again. Mula po naman sa Airline Industry Association. Yes, Bobby. Uh, sa, sa amin, well, uh, we look forward to flying more flights to the different provinces uh, to normalize our service to trade and commerce, domestic travel. And... Uh, we hope that the, the procedure and the policy regarding the arrival of this OFWs, no, of about 100,000, kailangan talaga paghandaan yan because uh, we have more experience now. I think better coordination uh, of all parties concerned. We really should prepare for the smooth processing of these OFWs that are coming, no? Uh, and I think one key strategy there is to disperse the arrival of the OMWs to the different international airports. Padami naman tayong airports. In, in addition to Clark, pwedeng Luwag, uh, pwedeng Cebu, Bacolo, Diloilo, Cagayan de Oro, Sambuanga, Davao. And they can, as long as the RT-PCR test you know, also is available in this airport or the provinces of these airports, then I, I think if there is the, the LGUs would be prepared to uh, accept them no? and provide quarantine facilities. Okay, very well. Uh, this won't be the last. We'll have you uh, sa mga susunod na edisyon ng ating palatuntunan. Ano? Babi, mabalos tayo. Yes. 
Yes, ma'am. Maraming salamat. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Dr. Ted, final word from the doctor in the house. Yes. Well, uh, isa lang naman. Welcome to the new normal po. <laughs> Nadinig natin yung airline industry, yung ating mga local chief executive at bilang doctor at advisor dito sa National Task Force ng COVID-19. I'm welcoming all Filipinos to the new normal. Uh, ano, ano ibig sabihin nito? We be kind to everybody. Huwag tayong magkalat ng COVID sa ating kapwa Pilipino at mag-behave tayo like good citizens. We follow we follow the recommendations, public health recommendations, uh, social distancing, uh, magbubukas na siguro yung restaurant sa ibang uh, lalawigan na na-declare na modified GCQ. So pwede nang kumain pero that doesn't mean wala ng COVID virus. Wala, nandyan pa rin po yung COVID-19 at kailangan pa rin po tayong mag-ingat at mag-stay safe. Very good. Pero isang tanong, yung bang nag exercise na naka-face mask, hindi ba delikado yun? Delikado yun. In fact, may nag-collapse na sa Thailand. Nagkaroon siya ng spontaneous pneumothorax. Pumutok yung lungs niya kasi nag-jogging siya with a face mask. And uh, hindi ko siya recommended. Ano? Ang recommended, eh, huwag ka na lang mag-mask and mag-distance ka from any other runner, jogger, or walker doon sa area na nag-exercise uh, ka. Pag, okay. Kasi talagang ano yan, marirebreed mo. Mas maraming CO2 kang nirebreed pag ay, ine-exhale pag nag exercise ka. So pag okay. niretain mo yun, hihimatayin ka talaga. Pwede kang himatayin. Yeah. At in that case sa Thailand, pumutok pa yung baga niya. So may operasyon pa yun. Ah, ganun. Pero oo, oo. hindi naman namatay sa COVID. Hindi, na, hindi naman. Hindi naman namatay. Nilagyan ng tubo yun. Nilagyan ng tubo para <laughs> mag-expand yung baga. Hindi, <laughs> kaya ako tinanong eh. Nakakapitong kilometro na ako eh. Kaya lang, naka-face mask ako. Eh, yun ang problema pala. Eh, kung wala ka namang ano, kung wala ka namang kasama katabi, ibaba mo na yung mask mo. Pagka may okay. tao, itaas mo ulit para hindi kayo naghihingahan at nagbubugahan. Na. Hindi ako huliin doon, ha? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> ay, oh, doon ka sa lugar na hindi ka mahuhuli. Eh, ah, okay, pag public, okay. kailangan kasi nakamask. Eh. Okay. Thank you very much. Mga kaibigan, it's another wonderful exchange with our resource persons. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikisa sa ating Wednesday Roundtable at Lido. Alam po ninyo, dalangin ko po na nabawasan yung inyong mga agam-agam at natugunan ang inyong mga katanungan. Nais kong pasalamatan ng ating mga resource persons at ang mga kapatid natin sa media who took time out to be with us. And join me in a short prayer na maging ligtas tayong lahat. Thank you very much for being a part of us. And of course, stay healthy. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. And congratulations to uh, Melo Acuna for being elected as a member of FOCAP. Uy! Salamat po.